pieces to me. Um, Todd and Javi, you guys want to introduce yourselves to me? I I'm, uh, haven't, don't think we've met before. Uh, yeah, hey, I'm Brody Sadva, aka Jim. I'm typically working on the on security issues, and I'm trying to listen in on this in order to educate myself about the give economy, so I can do a better job of reviewing the smart contracts and stuff as we're doing development. That's me. Awesome. Thanks for the intro. Welcome in, Katabe. Welcome in, Mitch. Hello. So, Javi and Brad, we usually, uh, or I usually wait until about 12.05 to, to get started to let the stragglers come in. So, we'll, we'll give them another two minutes here. Mitch, when do you leave for Burning Man? I think like on the 17th. Nice. You yep. going to stay the, I guess, what is it, two weeks? Two, maybe three. These things, you know. Three weeks, geez. <laughs> well, we've got like a week just traveling there in the convoy. And oh, then yeah. we build, and then we party, and then we take down, and then we decompress, and so I mean, yeah, yeah, hey. you know, trying to find these things take time. Hey, man, I hear you. I uh, I'm a festival goer myself, but I uh, I don't know if my body is ready for something like Burning Man. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Just lots of um. Vitamin C and apple cider vinegar. That's yeah, I'm text. sure that'll do the trick. <laughs> Lauren, I'm sorry, were you saying something? Okay. All right, guys, I have exactly 12 of 5 on my clock. So with that, we will get started. It is August 3rd, and we are in the Give Economy research call. So as always, I will go ahead and kick it off with the Notion check-in. Um, so Giant Kin came in a little bit um, before the call, basically said uh, he's a little bit busy. Um, so if we have any questions for him, um, I'll DM him. Um, as far as me, so my intentions today, um, I guess wrap up some of the um, nice token um, MVP plus uh, conversations that we had. Um, I guess we can answer any Angel Vault questions that people have and go over the balancer form post. And as far as my distractions, um, so a little bit of a personal note, I started a new job on Monday. Um, so I am kind of working around that schedule as well. Um, so that is my distraction today. Cool. So, uh, since I was just talking to Mitch, I will pass it to him. Uh, yeah, let's, um, I just want to talk about some post MVP for the nice token. Um, and after that, Sure. Um, let's figure out because I think somebody needs to take the lead on something in this one give multi sig with Ichi. And so we should decide who's going to do that. Um, and apart from that, I think Angel Vault and Give Power were close enough that we don't really need to talk about it in research. Okay. 
that's it for me. Um, I'll pass it to Lauren. Thanks, Mitch. Um, yeah, so my intentions are to, well, I mean, to, to go through all the things, but also specifically the one gift stuff, like what are we going to do with the give that's in the multi-sig and kind of figuring out like what Daniel was talking about in that chat and then he kind of hashing through it, making sure that we get the liquidity and the angel vault before rewards go live on Thursday. So there's a few steps there. I hope that Griff can come, but he's on another call right now, but Burning Man, I don't know yeah. if he'll come. And also my intention is to go over, Katabi was an interesting call with Shapeshift yesterday and they were talking about a lot of cool tokenomic stuff. So he has some great ideas and I want to kind of like hear them and make space for that as well. Um, I'm distracted by there being too many things I have to do. I'll pass it to Katabi. Uh, thanks, Lauren. Um, well, my intentions are, well, just um, see if there's, something that needs to be done and help with uh, be here. Um, and also I was, yeah, as Lauren said, I was in a shapeshift uh, tokenomics call and there were some things that might be interesting for us. So, so just bring them to the table. Don't know if they are a priority, but yeah. And no distractions right now. Uh, and I'll pass it to, sorry, sorry. Um, I'll pass it to, I think Jess was here. Right, yes, yes. That's my bad. Uh, I think we'll do. Yeah, Jesse. I couldn't tell who Kotabe, whoever you said. <laughs> I I said jazz, but jazz, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Um, so intentions for today's call. Um, basically, I was on vacation last week, so I missed the call. Um, I would, I'm here to kind of get updated on stuff. Um, and perhaps there will be some discussions on the BitDAO. Maybe we can um, have a little brainstorm around the ideas that we had, especially with Lauren. We were discussing some pushes yesterday throughout our media. And as for uh, distractions, uh, dinner time here, so I might be a little bit distracted with that. Otherwise, uh, we'll be uh, fully listening in. And with that, I'll pass it to, I think, Simona. Hey, Intentions is getting every day a bit more involved uh, with GiveIt, with this wonderful community. Distraction is that in this period, I'm a bit distracted by family because I have uh, a child uh, that is two months old and another 2.5 years. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. Do you want to pass it to, um, I guess, We've only got... Yeah, sorry, I arrived a bit late, so yeah, I wasn't sure about uh, who to pass to. Okay, sorry. No problem. I think uh, uh, I apologize if I pronounced your name wrong. Bratislava. Uh, yeah, Brody Sadva. Um, it's like Brody Sadva, but I'm a bro. Um, <laughs> okay. My intentions for this are simply to listen and observe, to try to get more context on. Uh, the give economy be work being done so that I can be more effective in security reviews. Uh, my distractions at the moment are uh, trying to trying to find some documentations for uh, a meeting that I've got later on today uh, about an NDA for our uh, penetration testers. That's it.
Awesome. Cool. Thanks everyone for the check-in. Um, sweet. So with that, um, we can start going through. So token swaps, I think the really only um, movement here uh, was the balancer forum post. So thanks everyone for reviewing that, voting on it. Um, I don't know why this is taking so long to load. Let's do this. Okay, sweet. Um, so specifically um, with the balancer forum post, um, basically this was just to kind of gauge interest on myself, Simone, and Kutabe um, kind of engaging some of these DAOs to figure out um, if they'd be interested in a pool. Um, so I'm sure most of you have, have gone through this already. Um, but basically just something like the water token and uh, but not an index token, it'd be just a pool. Um, so Katabi, thanks for your comments. And Ashley also um, asked a good question. Um, if this is going to be similar to water, then um, let's get an update on water. So just real quick, I posted this just before the meeting. But um, so trading volume is really low for water, uh, near zero for the last couple months. Uh, well, it's only been out for a couple months, near zero for like the last month or two. Um, so it initially launched at one dollar per token. It's about it's down about sixty percent, which all things considered isn't uh, crazy low for um, for market conditions right now. Um, but still, the volume is a little bit concerning with that. Um, so two of the post launch initiatives were uh, marketing for private buyers and then long term governance. Um, so as far as the private buyers, um, I would say it's pretty clear from the volume. Um, and also the price that there's a lot of disinterest in it. Um, so that's not to say that we couldn't mitigate that with proper marketing, but I think uh, um, initiative wasn't really taken, um, or at least that I'm aware of, um, to kind of make that happen. Um, so I think the price and the volume suffered because of that. Um, and then as far as the governance system, I'm not too sure what Paul had in mind with that. Um, but I, I'm not privy to, to what he's doing on that. Um, but I can follow up with him on that. Um, I, I do want to point out, though, uh, I know Ashley's not in here, but um, just for everyone's sake. So this is going to be different from the water token in a couple different ways. Um, I think first is basically, I mean, his main net liquidity. Um, we don't have, we have a much stronger presence on Gnosis Chain than we do mainnet. Uh, so I think any liquidity we put on, on mainnet is, is good. Um, also, it's, it's a lot less complex than an index token. Um, there's a lot of, um, I guess, mystery around what a index token is for the average user. Um, so I, I would say that this is going to be a lot, because it's going to be a lot simpler, it's going to be uh, more attractive for the average user to interact with. Uh, and also in that same vein, it's, it's basically, you know, it's Balancer, one of the biggest DEXs out there, um, much bigger than one I've. Uh, as far as active users. So that should also help us um, get more eyes on it and really just maintain a, a decent volume on it. Um, so yeah, I guess with that, does anyone have any questions um, about this? I, I guess the, the next steps for me is going to be, um, I'll, I'll talk to Paul on the side about the water token, but um, as it pertains to the balancer pool, um, I'll get with Gotabe and Fry Height um, offline and we can discuss how to um, balance out um, all these different DAOs. I know that Kotabe, um, you had said that you'd probably be able to talk to Aragon um, and Bankless, and I think Opolis too, is that right? Yep, that's right. Okay, cool. Um, so we don't have to hash it out here, um, but myself and um, Simone can, can break up the rest of those. Um, Obviously, shapeshift. We've got contacts there. I, Simone, I know you've got um, Paul's contact. I know you're at least decently close with him, so maybe you can take one hive. Um, but yeah, anyway, we can we can hash that out. Yeah, um, also if one hive has this problem of the share of the common pool that that, it, that they can allocate, that will uh, probably in the short term uh, restrict them uh, to invest more than twenty gay. But I guess it's still fine mm -hmm. with the 
model of this pool to have different uh, allocations to the various projects. Yeah, definitely. I had forgotten about that. Thanks for the reminder. Um, yeah. By the I way, think... I, have a, I have a quick question. Uh, does this pool uh, give a token? So do you get a token allocation that represents the pool? So is it like Uniswap V2 or is most like a Uniswap a, V3 where you don't have a token? Oh, am I muted? No, you're not muted. Great. It's just my app. Um, you get a balancer pool token, right? Like any, like any balancer pool. So you put in funds, you can, in, you can invest in any one of these funds. It auto balances it within the pool. And then you get a, a BPT in return, which is valued in whatever the, the percentages are from the index tokens. Thank you. Um, do we know, I was going to ask you, Chad Fai, um, from the water proposal, if there's not a lot of volume, do we still benefit from the collateralization of all these tokens with give? Yeah. Like, do we still a, get that? Yeah, that's a good idea. Or, I mean, that's a good point, rather. Um, so it was your recommendation that we kind of go after DAOs that aren't already in water. Um, so those are those listed here in bullets. Mm -hmm. um, waters above so we can definitely focus on those um if the lack of volume is kind of an artifact of the the collection of DAOs that was chosen uh among other things then in theory that should help us that we go after these DAOs. um so yeah um, we can definitely pursue those um to be on the top of the list and then Obviously, if we still want to hit eight, which is the max you can do for uh, weighted pools, then we can start going after some of these guys. What I meant was like, do we know that um, just the benefit of having all this collateral behind, like underneath give, like with water being represented by like $100,000 worth of each DAO tokens, does that actually help the token price of give even if there's no volume would you know that um so i guess we can think through it like a thought exercise so if there's no volume but assuming that every other token that's that's behind water is also partially collateralizing give mm. are we benefiting from that or is it is it doing nothing yeah, I mean, you can kind of look at it like a treasury diversification for giveth. Um, mm -hmm. And that we're taking just stagnant give in our treasury and we're essentially getting um, more exposure to the market where hopefully mm -hmm. we would want exposure. So I think that's the benefit there if there's zero volume. Obviously, with volume, you get trading fees. But um, yeah, I mean you know, just getting exposure and whether that exposure is good or bad, it's exposure um, mm -hmm. that we wanted to sign up for. So, you know, regardless of whether the tokens are going up or down, I think most ERC-20 tokens tend to track each other to some extent um, at a high level. Um, so, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think the treasury diversification is worth it if you're asking me. Yeah, okay. So there is benefit to water even though there's no volume. Well, there is benefit if these other tokens go up, I should say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, that's the ideal scenario. Well, the ideal scenario is the tokens go up and there's a lot of volume, but um, you know, beggars can't be choosers. But yeah, I mean, um, okay. I think at the end of the day, the treasury diversification is important um, so that if give were to go down significantly, then we kind of do have a backstop where we have <clears throat> more than just give in our treasury. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. That's a good question. Um, cool. So like I said, um, Simone, uh, Katabi, and I can get together offline about <clears throat> breaking these up. Um, but it sounds like, um, again, katabe has got Aragon and Bankless. Um, I think we nixed Opolis off this because they were already in water. Um, so that leaves kind of these guys. But um, yeah, we can figure that out offline.
Um, does anyone have any questions they want to ask about this um, before some of the team starts to dive in? Cool. All right. So let's see what else we got for token swaps. Um, so as far as in progress, um, Bankless, um, Katabe is, I'm just going to paraphrase what you told me. Uh, basically, we're going to go and give them the two options of, hey, we've got the balancer pool in the works. Also, if you want to do um, just a one-to-one -one token swap, that's up to you. Um, they did mention to Kotabi, I think this is interesting, that they have a Tokamak reactor. And I looked on Tokamak. <clears throat> they haven't activated it yet. Um, but it sounds like they're doing other token swaps regardless. So um, I don't think they'd be disinterested in in doing a swap with us, but Katabi, I'll let you speak to that. Yeah, uh, I mean, basically, that's kind of like uh, the latest. Um, I think that basically we're, we're, we are finding some points of collaboration. Uh, Bankless Academy and Bankless Brazil just joined Givet as projects. Um, and uh, yeah, we, let me see. He actually sent me a message today in the morning, but basically said something like um, there might be they might be interested in, on like creating like different um, bankless sub DAOs might be interested in creating projects and give it because with Jitcoin they can only create like one uh, project for all the sub DAOs and that's not ideal for them. Um, basically, they will finalize the verification process, and we'll see. But he's inviting, um, he's seeing like if he can start like rolling the ball for uh, in the next community call for an announcement. So moving forward. Cool. Do you want to tell everyone about um, them getting verified? Um. Everyone who cool. I'm sorry, they're uh, they're they're a verified project on Giveth now, right? For donations, they are not yet. Uh, okay. They are a project on Giveth, and they will apply for the verification process in the next uh, days. So it will take them about I don't know, maybe three weeks to get verified. Or Got it. Weeks. Sweet. Thanks. All right. Let's see what's next up. Uh, I'm going to talk about that one. Um, Simone mentioned that their uh, honey swap is still, or one hive rather, is still um, working on um, basically expanding how much money they can take out of their pool, their common pool, um, whatever they call it. Um, but it sounds like they might be able to put at least some small fraction in the balancer pool, so I'll leave that one open. Um, DLD, uh, Simone, I, I, I can't remember. Does that token exist yet or no? I, um, I think at one point we were going to talk about a forum post. I'm not sure where this landed. Um, short answer is that it's still something that we are defining. So I guess, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's something to be postponed to the future. Thank you. Cool. Thanks for the update. Um, I think with that, I'm going to move this. Um, into the ice box until maybe we further define this and then we can put it back on in progress. Um, so we just, sure. so we don't have to visit it every time. Does that sound okay? All right. Um, Gitcoin. So Griff is not here, I don't believe. No. Um, he was going to add me and Simone to a weekly call for, um, for Gitcoin. Um, that has not happened yet. Um, but I will be sure to, to ping Griff and make sure that we get put on that call um, before you guys head out. 
And yeah, so that's it for token swaps. I will go to the next epic. I think Angel Vault is the next one. Um, so this is launched. Thank you, Lauren, for all the awesome comms you had on this. Um, does anyone have uh, any questions on um, on the Angel Vault, on the incentives that we closed out last meeting, or um, how to use it, any of that stuff? The only thing I want to mention about the Angel Vault is that we have this like one gift thing. I, I mean, I guess honestly, it's like we have eight billion give and or eight million, I keep saying billion, eight million give in the multi sig for one give, and we don't actually need that much. We only need four hundred k, so it's like figuring out what to do that. And right now we're in conversation with Daniel um, from Ichi and kind of trying to figure it out in a DM. So we in that DM and Griff, but I think we need to have a meeting with him. I don't know. I I mean, if Griff was here, maybe it would have been a good space to talk about, like, what are we doing with this? Um, but I guess we can just talk about our meeting on Friday. Anyway, so that's just an update. Mm. Okay. Thanks for the update. So I'm just reading what you put here. Yeah, what I put there is actually just, like, the list of, like, things we need to do to close out the Angel Vault. We didn't get a chance to talk about it in the Give Economy call as well but it depends so heavily on griff that i don't think there's much we can do on on this call right now with the people here okay yeah that's fair okay with that um we can go to the next can topic. i yeah on the, on the angel vault thing and you know i kind of dropped this in comms i did the whole flow and i was like sorry i was like damn that's complicated um to like to to mint and then deposit and then take those and then go back on the you know RUI and then put it in. Um, yeah, they're actually going to be updating their UI to make it oh, really? easier, like step by step kind of thing. Yeah, it is, it is kind of hard to follow, but yeah, they're they're working on some changes on their UI. There's not much we can do really from our side. No. I understand that, but is it worthwhile to think of like writing um, like a quick tutorial or like a, a, appending a tutorial to like our docs once their UI is finished? Definitely. I think that's a great idea. It's um, like, it's just a couple steps, but like, you know, at least showing user where to start. Like I couldn't even figure out how to get one give and I was like, oh, I have to click mint, you know? I've been yeah. looking at Angel Vault for like months and I was like, I couldn't figure it out, you guys. Like Well, yeah. I mean I was gonna say if you follow our Twitter, I did write a tweet that said mint and there was a link and then it says provide liquidity and there was a link and then mistake and I there was look a at link. Twitter and then go to Giveth and go to Angel Oh my god. I'm sorry. It's the anyway. thing to do, but yeah, I'll make an issue in comms to create like a tutorial, but you know, pending their up UI updates. Yeah. In the meantime, we'll just pin your tweet on the UI. <laughs> Good idea. Oh, I'm teasing you. But anyway, something to put on radar. It, like it wasn't easy. I know. The Angel Vault is so. I think the biggest challenge with the Angel Vault is that it's very complicated to understand and also then it's complicated to interact with. And once you get there, you're like, wow, this is great. But before that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was my only comment. Cool. Good Thanks, Cool. Thank you both. Awesome. Um, so next up, we'll, we can talk about the post MVP for Nice Token. Um, unless did I miss anything? Yeah, let's go back to that one. Um, let's see. Bum, bum, bum. Um, cool. So I deleted some stuff we talked about that we said we were going to come back to in September. Um, but we did have some action items. Um, let's see. Um, the PO apps. T -t 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 -t. Ashley was working on that, or no? I can't remember who took that one. I think Ashley or, came in times asking for PO apps for donations. I don't know if it was for the nice token, though. No, she does that for givebacks. Yeah, it. and it's actually already decided and done. The decision was yeah. to uh, yeah. upgrade it so that you need $10. Yeah. For sure, yeah. Um, so as far as it pertains to the nice, wait, am I even looking at the right thing right now? This was for no, you are, you just wrote the wrong thing. You said eligible giveth donors, but it should say eligible, nice recipients, whatever the hell. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. 
Um, so yeah, I think I think Lauren and Chad Fi both looked at this and they're like, looks good. This basically requires no development. Um, we just need POAPs um, and to pick a number. So the idea here is that um, for each round of POAPs, which could be biweekly, it could be monthly, whatever, we would take an average of the donations, the eligible donations from the previous round and set the threshold for the next round. So the user needs to donate slightly above the average from the last round to become eligible for the POAP for this round. And so just setting like the first round is going to, you need to donate over 50 die of stables um, to get the pull up. And then after that, we take like the average plus 20 or something like that. Mm, that makes sense. Um, yeah, now I'm, it's all coming back to me. So um, we said we were going to try posting a bounty on Dwork for this. Um, do you want me yeah, to check in with design? And they're like, they said like, yeah, sure. Post on D word. Oh, okay, right on. Um, yeah, sweet. Um, cool. So I guess uh, just keep us updated on on that, or if you want someone else to to do that, I guess now's the time to delegate. Well, I'd love to. I'd love to put it up and just like let it bake. You know, okay. let people respond and design something while I'm at Burning Man. So okay. that'd be cool. cool. Um, and I. Go ahead. Kotabi, were you going to? Yeah, I, I was just going to say that um, if you need kind of like to delegate anything while you're at Burning Man, I can, I can help with this. Yeah, I mean, basically just like keep an eye on, on these bounties um, that are going to be coming up. I guess the idea with D work is that we would make a bounty for someone to design one POAP and then give them a contract to design 20 based yeah. on whichever design, because it's like an open competition. Anybody could submit a design. We choose the best one, we pay them for it, and then we like hire them to design 20 more. Good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and then... Um, the PFP whitelisting, um, Santi says early September, so that will coincide with um, when we leave Burning Man. Cool. Um, so technically, we can start PFP whitelisting right now, but it would take some effort from comms um, to do that. But it would require no development work at this point. We just like we run the API, we add addresses to a list and then that's kind of like it you would just exist in spreadsheets essentially now the the question is like should we should we give them a pfp or should we allow them to like mint before people i feel like giving them a pfp is more interesting mm. I'm trying to think. I've never done a whitelist for an NFT, but I, I've been tuned into some of them. Isn't it typically you get to mint before everyone else? I think that's typically what's done, right? Yeah, they and get like, the ability of like the early speculation. Yeah, and I think on top of that too, I don't know if this is real or not, but like, can we give them a a, a higher chance to get like a rare PFP? with like a trait that only exists in a couple of the uh, maybe cars. I don't know how it works but if we can start collecting their addresses right away then the technical stuff can be like we can like shuffle it you know be like ah Santi will figure it out okay. yeah and I think I think there is also merit in just like the whitelist thing even if I think that you know, in general, for the giver's PFE thing, the idea isn't that like, oh, this is going to be like the most rare and like, it's going to be the next board ape. But I think more the idea is that like, people will want this to be part of the giver's community and have a nice profile picture and just like, and mm -hmm. we'll make them kind of low barrier to entry. 
But I still mm-hmm. think that like people will want that early, like just so that they could have the joy of having their mm-hmm. giver's profile pick on their giveth profile. Mm-hmm. There's like quite a few giveth-y fans. So I think it's also a worthwhile incentive. Okay. Cool. So the main impact is that we will set the bar lower to be eligible because we're not giving them a PFP. We're just letting them mint it. So they still have to buy it, but they can buy it ahead of other people. Yeah, great idea. Okay. Um, maybe does anybody have an idea, like a ballpark, what that threshold should be? Um, remind me, uh, we're doing, to get on the whitelist, you have to do what exactly? You have to have donated a certain amount of dye to giveth. Can we make it like somewhere a little over 100 or something? Okay. I, 100 is a nice spot. I think yeah. 100 is a good spot as well. And we could even make it 120 because, I mean, that was, I, you know, I, I, you know, as a nice user, I wanted uh, to have the ability to buy two pieces of swag and all the swag is like 60. So then I was like, hmm, okay, 120. You can get two mugs. Yeah, you can get two mugs for 120. So it's kind of like a, it's like a double whammy where they could get two pieces of swag and also, you know, um, get, get on the white list. So anyway, 100 or 120. Do we make okay. the mugs $60? Damn, I didn't realize we made them that expensive. No, the mugs like, is it like 30 or 40? I think maybe 30. And then the big mug was like more, but anyway. Um, I was like 60 bucks for a mug. Holy shit. <laughs> um, cool. So yeah, I mean, um, if we had to decide right now, I would say 100. Um I think what would happen, and this is just my thought, is if someone donates a hundred for the whitelist, they spend sixty of it to get a t-shirt. They have forty dollars sitting there. They're either going to buy like a mug, or they're going to say, "Well, maybe I donate a little bit more and I get a, a beanie or whatever, or a bucket hat." Um, it it's might like when you it. when you go to a restaurant with your friend and you order an appetizer and only three pieces come. Then you're like, damn it, I should have ordered two. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, so that would be that would be my reasoning behind picking 100, but um, I could go either way. Um, I don't know if we need to make a decision right now. Um, I guess we kind of do if we're going to go ahead and start collecting addresses. I mean, it's like it's a it's a fast follow that requires no development, you know? Yeah. Okay. It just maybe needs we, to be announced. That's it. Maybe uh, I don't know if we need a noodle on it. Um, I cast my vote for a hundred. I don't know if anyone wants to throw another number out there, or say yay or nay to either one hundred or one hundred twenty. I like one hundred. Yeah. Cool. Anyone else? Um. No. <laughs> Would it be? Sorry, I'm like I had a thought and then I was like I said nope audibly. But um <laughs> I'm losing it guys. So. Anyone else? Mitch says no, no one else can vote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll call it two or three um four one hundred. So where's the dollar sign? All right. Um and maybe cool. I'll reach out to Santi if we can like leak some alpha, you know? Yeah. Get a For little sure. screenshot of the what the PFPs might look like instead of just like those sketches basically. Yeah. Cool. Awesome, awesome. Um so the more promo on the app, um whenever a dev has time, someone was gonna create issues, I didn't put a name down. Um, uh, Mitch, did you create any issues on this or, or no? I just made a pile of issues right um, onto the Epic in okay. GitHub, the same Epic. So there was just like a bunch of things that I sort of just like spitballed into the the issue. Cool, awesome. Um, any ones in particular you want us to look at or um, cool if we move on? Well, some of them we, we just talked about. Um, oh. But 
I think this is probably enough for now. Good deal. Alrighty then. Um, this was in here from last week. I'm either losing my memory or this was put in after the meeting. Um, Kotabi, I think you were heading this, so I'll give you the floor if you want to um, talk about this briefly. We basically went through them on the dev, um, give economy dev call. Um, so there is the update there. Got it. Okay. Anything, uh, anything you want to talk about here or um, point out? Um, not much. Basically, um, some things are might be moving forward. I wouldn't say that we have something like super close to become a deal. More like m more people like being uh, interested and in really understanding what it is, what is it for, and that might be a good fit. So mm -hmm. that's progress. But that's it. I uh, I mean I have blockchain for good for, uh, Telegram group. I ask like, hey, some breaks here are releasing or have released token recently, but I uh, heard crickets. Um, so no, still still like looking for right fits, but that's that's where we are. Um, cool. I think that with Aragorn, is going to, there's going to be a nice synergy. So I'm waiting for uh, mid-August for to continue that conversation. Got it. Cool. Yeah, I know it sounds like um, some good progress has been made on this. So bravo, sir. Good uh Good job with the outreach. All right, I think that is everything we had on here. So we can jump over to austerity. I know, yes, you wanted to talk about um, BitDo, and I think I put that in here. I did. OK, cool. So um, yes, if you want to take the mic. Um, yeah, thanks, Chatpai. So basically, this is more of an update um, for everyone else here who are curious uh, about the progress. Um, thanks to Lauren, um, Suga, and Sim, basically, there's going to be a blog post out, I, I hope, for next week. Um, and it's more or less pointing out to the benefits that the partnership will bring. And we're going to promote it a lot also on our Twitter uh, hopefully to grab the attention of the main ambassadors in BitDAO who are calling the shots on these investments um, to kind of grab their attention more. I'm in touch with a couple of guys from the embassy who are in touch with the investors. And I've been informed that um, they are sharing our proposals and the, the, the AMA we had with them on a regular basis, basically, with those VCs. And those VCs are Wind Ranger and Mirana Labs, actually, that are backing the uh, BitDAO uh, proposals and putting them on snapshot votes. So I'm hoping that once we put out this proposal, um, this blog post, sorry, and uh, make some more Twitter, uh, like more tweets, basically pointing out why this partnership is meaningful for also them and for us and how we are thinking to arrange it with our farms, with our streams and so on. Uh, we might have a better chance of uh, getting the attention of those guys and hopefully get a discussion and a call with their investors um, to get serious with this uh, proposal. And I believe if that could happen, the next step would be that they will help us to co-author co a proper proposal, pointing out the details and how we're going to structure the round. Um, and if that happens, then getting a vote, it seems that it's a 100% chance of success. So this is more or less the plan, just to really put it out there and get as much as visibility as possible um, on, on our plans with BitDAO and really pointing out the benefits. So if um, any of you guys um, have had some research on them, on the other DAOs that they're partnering up with, and you have some valid comments, points, feedback of why you think it's relevant also for them and why you think this partnership could work, it would be helpful for us to also kind of um, summarize that in our posts and in the tweets that you're going to have. And um, another thing, sorry, would be that once these tweets are out, again, guys, um, would be helpful if you can retweet them and just 
spread the word. That's that's what everyone in the DAO is saying. Like we just need a lot of visibility and words around this. Okay. Um, cool. So you had two things for the group and um so each with twitter posts between like um the first one um so you're you're saying uh the other bit dow donation recipients um if we're familiar with kind of their process and and what their um uh i can't think of the word um, value prop was then to get with you and, and we'll kind of craft that into our own is that did I yeah 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 just to make this kind of pitch to them more bulletproof that hey this partnership is meaningful because we are kind of supporting the same web3 ecosystem and we would like to give a voice to a lot of projects in in also like for good um economies and and you know um other web3 projects that need, need to prosper in this ecosystem and we are trying to do that from our non-profit perspective and you guys are trying to do that it's more for profit with um the investments that you have from your side so we kind of have more or less the same vision to really like grow and nurture this ecosystem uh, with different industries that we can be supporting um, this is kind of the direction that we are thinking of drafting this pitch. But if you guys can think of anything else to make this proposal more bulletproof and more meaningful for also um, both sides, actually, that why this partnership is it, it, it's, uh, valid, then let us know or you can just DM me and we will put it in our proposal. Is, is there a list of previous BitDAO donation recipients somewhere? Um, you mean the proposal that got a pass? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's actually not that many. It's a very recent topic, so that's why I think it's not so many. But I can just name them. It's Pleaser Dao, which is the most recent one. They got Edu, edu Dao, it's the education Dao. Then there is the ZK Dao, and then there is Game, game 7, I think, which is a gaming projects okay good deal um yeah i'm not personally familiar with any of them but um i'll do a little background research into them and see uh what we can't pull uh and i cool. encourage everyone else to do the same um cool uh and you said there was two vcs and i missed the names of them i just wanted to record it um can you repeat those wind ranger and Mirana. Did I spell those right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Um, so yeah, just to kind of harken back to Griff's comment from last week, um, this is a really, really big deal. I think it's um, 2.5 million is going to be the, the donation. Um, so yeah, really, really encourage you to, to help Yes, however you can. Um, when I get time this week, um, I'll look into to how these different DAOs um, kind of operated um, for the donation. And um, yeah, I encourage everyone else to do the same. However you can help, yes, um, please do. Even if it's just a simple retweet of the Twitter post, um, highly encourage you to help out there. From the community's perspective, I think we can uh, maybe outreach to Edo Dao and see if they are working in public goods, like if it makes sense for them to have a project in Gibbet. And that kind of synergy might be a good signal. Oh, okay. So as far as these four, like reaching out to them for being a, um, on the yeah, Gibbet I mean, right, right now, I'm just thinking about Edo Dao. Uh, that, that for sure probably oh. is like a good fit for, for uh, a project and give it and i mean we can see i can see i i, I will check that out like if it's like
fit in for, for them. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good idea, Kutab. I'm actually in touch with some members from EduDAO, uh, but I, I got in touch in a completely different angle about the investment side and how it worked out and if they can make some intro. Um, but it's a good idea that you mentioned. Maybe we can point it out that they potentially could also work with us on our platform and um, kind of establish a more friendly partnership from there. And I believe if that happens, they will be more friendly or helpful to um, kind of make those intros to their investors. Yeah. Awesome. Good idea. Cool, cool. All right. Um, that, I believe, was one of the last things. I saw one more ticket open, um, so we'll check with that. I think, um, yes, I want to speak for you. This one is still on hold, um, but I'll let you tell me if I'm wrong or not. Yeah, yeah, still on hold. Um, I'm kind of back in the game with getting in touch with also more VCs. Um, Lauren also made some intros on Telegram to some that she met during the conferences. And I'm going to pitch the idea first to these VCs that um, we could also do a success token. Um, and if some of them are in and they would like to go for it, it's not going to be a huge trouble for us to actually make them um, happen. It, it's not time consuming. And most likely, some of the terms need to be also defined by the interested investor. So in any case, we need to first have the interest from the investor and then get on with um, making them, making these tokens. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. Good deal. Um, cool. So I think that is all for today's call. Uh, I want to make sure we didn't miss anything. I don't think so, other than the one give, which we'll have to table for now. Um, cool. So with the last six-ish minutes, is there anything anyone wants to bring up? Yeah, uh, I think I want to take um, the advantage to share a little bit of what I, I learned yesterday at the Shapeshift uh, token oh. call. Yeah, please. Um, so basically, an interesting project maybe to keep an eye on. I don't, I don't know if it's a priority, but uh, they were invited to the give economy, to their give economy, like their their economy research call, uh, and it's uh, fringe finance. Um, so I can share the kind of like main links. Um, it's interesting. They're doing something very similar to Rory Pool. Uh, where basically you can um, activate borrowing um, over like co co like collateralize with your with with your token to to ask for borrowings and kind of like uh, I I believe sorry I'm not too expert on these topics but um, it's sort of like have it for your own protocol. Um, and there were some questions about well, what like, what are you doing different, and how can you be sure that you're not going to get exploited as the Rari pools did, um, and that there was like a very technical answer to that. But basically, from what I understand, is um, they are being way more careful on kind of like whitelisting the tokens that you can borrow against, because I think that the attack on Rory Pool was something like callback attack or something more technical that I don't remember right now. Um, but basically with this with the tokens that they are like whitelisting, uh, that will not be the case. Um, anyways, I don't know if this is like I know that we talked about Rari before. And uh, we actually were talking about Rory just before they got hacked. Um, I don't think it's a priority right now, but it's good to know that they are there. They, um, they've been around for very little time, but they are using, uh, from, from what they said, they're, they're, they're using like 
code from Balancer. They're using code from uh, different open source projects that are have been a bit more battle tested. Um, and team seems to be solid. We I, maybe I can talk a little bit more with Willy. That was also on that call. Uh, and at some point where this can be interesting for us, you know, to kind of like use, give as collateral for a stable token or something like that um, could be nice. I mean, the, the nice thing about them being so new is that I believe um, there are more opportunities for, yeah, having kind of like more customized service as they kind of like we're approaching to shape shift in the same perspective. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I don't believe it, it's a priority and I don't know what, what do you guys think? Yeah, I, I've never heard of fringe finance. Um, so I can't really speak too much to it. Um, I think it's worth looking into. Um, so thanks for bringing it up. Um, but yeah, I'm not familiar with it, um, so I I don't know if I'd advocate it or not yet. But from what you just said, it, it sounds like it's, it's it's at least worth this group looking into. Yeah, I agree. I think it's it's worth looking into, uh, but also like I mean the the thing we needed the Rari pool for so I hiccups was the Angel Vault, and like because we needed more stables than we had available, and um, then our market cap went down and then we decided to go a different route with like getting investors and not doing any borrowing at all so right now we don't have the immediate need for like bar borrowing large amounts of stables but i think it's worth looking into in case in the future we, we want to borrow some stables and like this could be an option something we have in the back pocket exactly i agree A fun note, I don't know if you've ever um, heard of DeFi safety, but I, they do like uh, protocol and contract reviews, like uh, independent. And so usually before I get into anything, I go on there and they've got like a really easy to understand um, overview of like projects and protocols. So you can kind of like do like easy, quick risk assessment. Oh, cool. And they're based out of Montreal. Learn something new every day. Thanks for the tip. Nice. Yep. I already forgot the name. What was it? <laughs> French. Mm. Ah, unfortunate. That's Not good there to know. Yet. Yeah, that's really good to know. Cool, thanks for that. Yeah. Good deal. Well, we are right at time, ladies and gentlemen. So I appreciate everyone joining. Um, Brody, I, I hope uh, you enjoyed your first meeting. And um, for the regulars, Katabe, Mitch, Lauren, Jesse, and Yes, I appreciate you coming as usual. And uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you before the next time. But if I don't, I'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you, Chad. Thanks, Chad. See you guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye.